Hello and welcome to individual income tax return for the 2020 tax returns. Uh, ACNT 1331. Well, I want to go over basically how to do a tax return and nice little fun other items that we can go over in these coming chapters. First off, we're going to go over the basics in chapter one. So I am your host, Professor Naragon. So welcome to the adventure of taxes. Woo woo. All right, so in this chapter, we're going to have pretty much 11 learning objectives. And these videos are going to be broken out per learning objective for y'all, so it's not so long. First one, we're going to explain a little bit about the history and objectives of the U.S. tax law. Then we're going to describe the different entities subject to tax and reporting requirements. We're going to apply the tax formula for individuals, identify individuals who must, pay, who must file the tax return, determine filing status, and understand the calculation of the tax according to the filing status. That's very key. We need to find quality uh, dependents, determine the tax impact of the economic impact payment and the recovery rebate credit. We also need to calculate the correct standard or itemized deduction amount for taxpayers and compute the basic capital gains and losses. We're going to get into more capital gains and losses later on. We're also going to assess and use various internet tax resources. This again will help us a little bit of research. And then we'll finally describe the basics of e-filing or electronic filing, which is should be pretty much number one now these days. All right. So we're going to start off first with the history and the objectives of the tax system. Now, tax in itself has actually been pretty much against the Constitution. We found it unconstitutional for many, many years up until 1913. That's when we passed the 16th Amendment. And this made uh, income tax, a federal income tax, constitutional. And thus, the constitutionality of the income tax has not been questioned by federal courts since then. Now, it has gone through a lot of changes, as we do know. Uh, the last one was the big one in 2017. Uh, tax Cut and Jobs Act. That's the next slide. Just want to make sure I said that, the act right because sometimes it is a little bit hard to remember. But we also had back in the 80s that changed a lot of things when Social Security, so forth and so on with the New Deal. There's a lot of history to it. We're not going to go over every bit, but it's a good history if you ever want to learn the history of the tax system. Now I can already hear crickets chirping there. But what the tax actually serves is also a multitude of purposes, such as one, to raise revenue. Government has to basically run on something. Basically, that's what it is. And it's to stimulate the economy as economic, uh, economic goals. Surprisingly, it does. One is to actually reduce unemployment. Again, mostly by taxing the unemployment. But it is there to stimulate, to show that income has happened, and also a good statistic uh, for uh, the government on determining how many people are unemployed and who's getting 
self-employed, so forth and so on. It expands investment in productivity capital assets. Again, people like to not pay as much tax, so they may invest into other items, which actually has lower tax rates. People like that. Is there to control inflation? Surprisingly, yes. Right there, again, they use a lot of different numbers in the tax return to actually help statistically rise on how inflation goes and whatnot. This is also why they do change the tax law a lot. One, again, is that they change the numbers to help avoid inflation and to provide enough um, bounce back to keep it down. Now, if they do need to basically raise a little bit of inflation, they will sell. Again, that's them saying, no, we're backing away from this tax code or other items. It's also there to encourage certain business activities in industries. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. With uh, the Schedule C for our individual or self-employment, right there it helps. Uh, again, tax rates. But also, you have your passive income in Schedule E that basically defines partnerships and S-Corps. So those, yeah, they can curb those because, again, lower taxes by using other tax means. Now, this is actually interesting. It is also there to encourage taxpayers to undertake activities that benefit themselves and society. It's there to actually uh, the itemize. The itemize wouldn't be there unless to encourage y'all to do certain things. Like mortgage. Buying a house. They make sure that you get deductions to buy a house to get more people to buy houses. Or, same thing, the reason why we itemize for charitable actions is there for you to go donate to charity. Because one, you think you're going to get a deduction, which we're going to go over, but it does actually happen. Now, they make these laws back and forth the last bit major one again was like Obamacare or they try to encourage people to buy medical insurance or receive a penalty again they kind of influence activities by either penalizing you for not doing it or giving you a credit to do it or just basically a deduction uh, they try and get you to itemize most taxpayers do not itemize. We'll tell you that right now. All right. Now, the brand new law that actually happened was back in 2017. We've already been through a lot of this already. But back in December 2017, and enacted basically in the 2018 tax return, is the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. This TCJA. Tisaja. Something like that. Woo! And this includes the following provisions that we all know and love. First one was the reduction of individual tax rates. Before this, we had about eight or nine different tax rates. I mean, basically reduced it down to almost four. Made it very simple. Loved it. It increased the standard deduction. This it did significantly. So instead of a few thousand here, it went like all the way up to 12 grand and then 24,000 for couples. It was nice. Uh, suspension of personal exemptions. Okay. That one hurt a lot of people. Because people usually had this one. This was like um, basically like 2,250 
exempt for everybody that was on your tax return. So that hurt big families at first. But um, people got adjusted to it because, again, it is what it is on that. Uh, give a little, take a little. We actually added the qualified business income de deduction. So that was for trader businesses that you get to basically take off 20% of your net income that's taxed. Uh, suspension of itemized deduction phase out. Yeah. Uh, again, itemized deductions, we're going to get into that. That's a very, very controversial thing. People don't, most people don't qualify for to actually itemize. But we'll go over that in a later chapter. Uh, temporary cap on state and local taxes. It reduced the limit on mortgage interest deductions. That was about 10 grand that we can do. It increased the child tax credit to basically 2000 All of it, great stuff. Well, except for suspension of personal exemptions. Nobody liked that. But everything really did help. And again, this law also removed the uh, basically Obamacare penalty. I also got put in there. But it was a good act in a lot of ways. It did kind of simplified the tax return a little bit. We say a little bit because it made the 1040 look good, but it tacked on tons and tons of schedules. So now we got numbered schedules. Before then we didn't, now we do. Okay, so this was a brief history of it. So your PowerPoints do add a few little items like polls and discussions and questions and this just happens to be a poll so which of the following do you think is the most important goal of the income tax system and basically this means your opinion on this but, um, I mean it could be raising revenue to operate the government Providing incentives for certain business and economic goals, such as higher employment rates through business favorable tax provision, uh, provisions, or provide incentives for certain social goals, such as charitable giving, by allowing tax deductions, exclusions, or credits for selected activities. I mean, whichever one that you think it is, that's your opinion. But really, an argument can be made for each of these answers. It just would depend on the priorities of the individual answering the question. So, really, it's your priorities on that. And basically, what the current economic needs of the country may also influence the importance of each goal. These are all good goals. But again, we have other factors that help make which one important at the time, okay? So that's gonna conclude this part of learning objective number one. Um, so if you have any questions already, you're more than free to email me and I will get back to you as soon as I can.